Hello, this is your girl Pam with Pam for Christ. Uh, I just wanted to cover something. Um, I had to make sure I wrote down my key points because I don't want to miss anything on this right here. Um, but me and my clients was talking about this um, really earlier. But um, the thing about it is um, when it comes to gun laws and gun control, I'm sorry. Nothing's going to change. Listen to me, guys. I mean, I'm here to tell the truth and nothing but the truth. But I am on your side, you know, for real, with, with so much happening, so much going on, and, you know, so many people getting their hands on, you know, guns that shouldn't have their hands on the guns or whatever, but I, I am, like I said, I am on your side because something needs to be done, but at the same time, you have to face reality, you have to really look at the big picture. Nothing's going to get done. I mean, you have to look at the fact that um, guns being manufactured is a business. It's a billion dollar business. So something that's a billion dollar business isn't going to stop, period. Especially when you have wars and you have all these other things that's going on. So with it being a manufactured business, a billion dollar business, that's not going to stop. Okay, uh, as far as like trying to talk and yell at the president about you need to do something with the laws and the gun control, like I said, I understand it's a lot of people that are angry. I am on your side. But at the same time, I don't care how many presidents that you yell at and you think that you're trying to get a point across because you're angry, you're not going to get a point across. Every president that has sat in that chair or that has sat in the White House has had people yelling at them about guns, gun laws, and gun control, and nothing has been done. They will pacify you and tell you, we're going to look into the situation, we're going to see what we can do, blah, blah, blah. But nothing's going to get passed. Do you know how long it takes for a law to actually get signed and passed? I mean, Trump can be in and out of um, office by the time you get anything or look like you want to get anything passed. And that, that still don't mean that it's going to get passed even when he get out of office. So he can start something, but that don't mean that it's going to get passed. And if it does, it may be another 30, 40 years. It may be another 50, 60 years. It depends on whether or not the next president after that decides that they want to piggyback off of what the president before them has done. So, like I said, I don't care how many presidents you can, you can scream and yell at. That don't mean that they're going to do it. That don't mean that they're going to change it. You know, but they'll pacify you to make you think that they're listening and to make you think that they're going to do something about it. But that's not necessarily true. Because like I said, if you look back at all these presidents where you've had something crazy that has happened or shooting uh, here or shooting there or shooting at a school or whatever or shooting at a mall, yeah, you've had people that's been yelling at the president, hey, you need to do something, but nothing has been done. Have you seen anything done? It's the same as um, when they came out with like the seatbelt law, okay? I'm not trying to really compare one to the other, but I just need you to be able to get the understanding. Okay, well, when you came out to the point where we were talking about you had to wear your seatbelt or whatever, it's the law, you can get a ticket, buckle up or whatever. Okay, well, that's basically for our safety, you know, because they made cars without the seatbelts. I think by the time they really started making cars with seatbelts, uh, well, all cars with seatbelts, I think it had to be the 1988 or 1989. I don't know when they started making all vehicles with the seatbelts. But before then, it, there were only a select few uh, cars that were made with the seatbelts. Because I don't know whether or not you remember being a kid, riding around, and you didn't have no seatbelt on. You know what I'm saying? You, I mean, mom and them, um, or, or your daddy, you know, they drove with caution. But you was going on trips to other states, and nobody had a seatbelt on. And so until they made that a law, then they started practicing it. But at the same time, now... Honey, the police will pass by you, and I have seen it. The police will pass by you without a seatbelt on and will not kill. They don't. That was something that was done back then. Once they passed the law back then, they may have stuck with it for the first 10 years, and after that, they really don't care what you do when it comes to a seatbelt. Now, if you get into an accident and you didn't wear your seatbelt, then, okay, they can go ahead and cite, you know, give you a citation for that, especially if it's your fault, you know, and then you hurt someone else and it's your fault or whatever. But, um... No, see, like I said, I mean, once they get something done or once they get something started, they, they may stick with it for a little while and then after that, mm, mm Because the thing about it is laws change each and every day. We don't know what, what which can, but laws literally, when you look at in the history books, they change every single day. So this, like I said, I'm on your side, but this one law that you're saying uh, as far as like gun control, nothing's going to be done. It's all about profit. It's all about business. You know, like I said, these manufacturers are making billions of dollars. So you're not going to really get anything done in that particular area. I'm sorry, but you're not... Okay, and then on top of that, you have to look at the, uh, I hate to say it, I love America, I'm not going to lie, but we all know that the government is 75% shady. So, my thing is, um, there are movies that were made um, to sort of let you know, even when it comes to guns. Um, what was that movie, War Dogs with uh, Jonah Hill. Okay, and then you have the other um, movie, American Made, I think that was with Tom Cruise. Okay, these are true stories of people that were smuggling guns from America to other countries because 
the government wanted these guns in, you know, um, <laughs> those terrorist hands in order for them to destroy themselves. Not us, but for them to destroy themselves. But guess what? We were giving them the guns. We were, we were selling them the guns. I mean... It's, it's a business. All of it is a business. Now, mind you, they may do that to people that are in other countries, but they won't do that to the people that's in the United States as far as like, yeah, you going from, you know, you trying to sell the guns to, you know, terrorists to, to shoot up stuff and all, you know, the government won't do that to Americans, but hey, you don't mind about doing it to other countries. Sad, but true. But at the same time, you have to still look at, okay, um, people will get their hands on, um, guns regardless of you whether or not you to pass the law you still gonna get your hand on it so even if you pass the law saying that um you have to be 21 years or older you have to have uh no more than one misdemeanor on your record you know misdemeanor ain't nothing you know we talking about felon and all you now you breaking the law you got a gun in your possession but you know one misdemeanor on your record 21 years or older uh you can't have more than three guns registered under your name you know um they can't be military grade they have to be you know um regular handguns, you know, you can't have rifles, not unless you have a, um, you know, a permit to, I guess you could say hunt, you get what I'm saying, now my thing is, I'm straight up country, I'm from the country, you know, we used to hunt, we had elephant guns, we had rifles, we had, uh, 357s, we had 9 millimeters. we had, uh, I mean, you name it, 45s, you, you name it, we had it, I mean, come on, you know, we, we're a hunting family, so, we hunt, so whatever gun you can get your hand on, you were shooting at something. <laughs> Serious. So my thing is, okay, even for, and then you have people that, that's for, you know, um, guns. You know, they want the guns. They want to be able to hunt. They want to be able to do this. They want, they want to be able to do this. So you're looking at um, really taking away um, your particular freedom to have, you know, your weapon, your to bear arms, you know. So everybody's not going to agree with the fact that, you know, you want stricter gun control and gun laws and this and that. Everybody's not going to agree. I'm on your side. Everybody's not going to agree. You go, because like I said, you got people that, um, they need to protect themselves. You got people that like to hunt or whatever. And even, like I said, even if they constrict however many guns and all this other stuff or whatever, it's still not going to make a difference. Because guess what? Even if they did say 21 years old or one misdemeanor, no more than three guns, guess what? For the ones that's 15, 16, 17, 18 years old, they got people bullying them or they go crazy in the head. You know, you look cuckoo for cocoa puffs in the head. Then guess what's going to happen? The people that are registered with guns, they're going to either borrow them or they're going to steal them. So they're still going to get their agenda fulfilled regardless of the fact that whether or not they can get a gun. Okay, example. Um... At a set of apartments that I lived in, and like I said, you can look at some of the stories or whatever about, you know, a lot of stuff that I had been through. But um, the guy that um, they got the shooting, like I said, in front of my door on my porch, I'm standing right there. The dude shot at us, you know, with the um, 12 gauge. We didn't get hit. So that's another story that's on this channel. But at the same time, uh, the guy that had the 12 gauge, he was fresh out of, out of um, prison. He had no been to have the hit. Felony. He ain't no better have no gun. Period. But yet, yeah, you got your hand on two. Okay? Um, The other guy, he had, oh my God, he has such a huge collection of guns. It's ridiculous. It's really ridiculous. But at the same time, he had two on him. He left to go grab two more. I'm saying to myself, like, wow, like, serious? Wait, where these guns come from? Where did you get that from? But it don't matter because you know somebody that know somebody that know somebody that can still get you a gun. Why? Because you mad at this person, so you want to shoot up this person's house, or you want to shoot this person up, and you finna go get a gun. Whether you borrow it, whether you steal it, it really don't even matter. You finna get a gun. So, so like I said, regardless of the fact that whether or not they do decide to do stricter gun laws, if these people want to decide to shoot up something, they gonna find a way to do it. They gonna find a gun to do it too. So passing those laws, like I said, I'm on your side. Yeah, we need that done, but it's not going to matter because like I said, you looking at a billion dollar business. These people ain't going to stop manufacturing. These people ain't going to stop selling guns. These people ain't going to stop uh, giving Americans the guns either. They're not going to stop doing it. So my thing is, it's always a bad apple in the somewhere. So even if you are licensed and you have your gun, you have your permits and all this other stuff or whatever, if somebody want to steal one from you or if somebody want to, you know, take one from you or if somebody decide to let you borrow one because you have a problem with, you know, uh, Jim, Johnny, and Jane, 
then guess what? You still gonna get your hands on one. Because like I said, the dudes that got the shooting um, you know, on my porch that day, um, y'all was rolling with a um a nine millimeter or forty five twelve gauge, then the dude when he got an AK forty seven, then he got some other gun that sounded like a cannon. I couldn't even tell you what that was. Then, then he come back. Another one come back with a uh, a rifle. Then I know I seen a military grade uh um uh, rifle that the other guy uh had out of his trunk. And I see him looking like, well, was you in the military, bro? Like, what was your rank? Cause you got a whole entire trunk full of guns. I, who you finna go to war with? But see, that's what I'm saying. You still gonna find a way to get it. Regardless, you still gonna find a way to get it. Regardless of whether or not you pass a law, it's still gonna happen. So. My thing is, there's nothing you can do about it. You can say that you want to pass. They can pretend like they're going to pass it, but they're not going to do it because what? It's all about business. Like I said, I'm not knocking what you're saying. I'm on your side. That's what they need to do because I don't, these too many people run around here with these guns. And I feel that if you get a, have a gun, you get caught with it and you're not registered and you're too young, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Guess what? You need to serve some time. And maybe that, that may be one thing that'll scare them into doing what they need to do or to doing right or to not touch a gun. Hey, lock them up. I mean, I ain't, we're not talking about two and three years. No, lock them up. Let's start off with 10. You know, make them scare, scare them. Start off with 10 years to let you know you've been to sit up in prison for a long time or either the rest of your life for breaking this particular law. So if you want them to pass a particular law, a gun law, it's not the fact that not selling them or having them because they're going to sell them anyway. But let's just say for using them, for having it in your possession, you don't meet the requirements and you used it. Yeah, 10 years, 15, 20, 30. Scare them like that. But like I said, wrapping it up, like I said, they ain't finna stop selling them. They ain't finna stop making them. They ain't finna stop manufacturing them. And the, and the government definitely ain't finna stop sending them out. Period. So uh, it's, it's, uh, it'll be very amazing if they decide to do something about it. But guess what? For the past two, maybe 300 years, every time a president sat in the chair and something happened, ain't no, no. Mm-mm. When you want something passed and you want something done, it, it hadn't got done. But they would give you sincere apologies. And, oh, we're going we gonna to fix the situation. Y'all ain't fixing no situation. They already know they ain't going to fix no situation. They're just trying to shut you up. That's all it is. They're just trying to shut your mouth, trying to make you feel better. But ain't nothing finna get passed. I'm sorry that, you know, the shooting did happen, you know, down there in um, Florida. I pray for those families of the um, loved ones that got killed because that is horrible and i mean terribly horrible but they're not going to do anything about no gun laws and they're not going to do anything about the guns either i'm sorry they're not going to do anything about it but like i said i am on your side and i pray that something does get done but it ain't going to get done in our lifetime simple as that but this is your girl pam with pam um for pride and i love you guys and peace